Welcome back, everyone. We have only gotten two games so far of Spencer Dimwitty in a Lakers uniform, but even in that brief time frame, he's already made a pretty good first impression. Putting the numbers aside here, Dimwitty has appeared to be a perfect fit off their bench. And now the question is, could he be auditioning to be their future point guard, or at least have a future spot within their rotation? Before we get too far into it though, be sure to check out G2A.com for the best deals in your favorite games, credits, and everything digital entertainment. You can check them out in the video description down below. But now getting back to the video, and like I referred to before, Spencer Dinwiddie could very well be trying out for a spot on their future team. He will be a free agent after all, and the only point guard they have under a guaranteed contract happens to be Jalen Hochefino, as I count Gabe Vincent as more of a combo guard, and kind of a backup one at that. Other than them, they might have D'Angelo Russell, but they have no control over what he'll do. He does have a player option on his contract after all, and that will give D'Lo full control over whether or not he comes back, or instead becomes a free agent. And even if he would come back, I don't think that would rule out the return of Dinwiddie. We already know they have great chemistry from their time together in Brooklyn, and they have been very open about wanting to play together too. Not only that though, but it will give the Lakers another option in case they would look to trade D'Angelo Russell which they have definitely thought about doing for better or worse. And with that in mind here, there is a lot to think about when it comes to both the short term and long term future of Spencer Dinwiddie. He will obviously have to keep proving that he's a good fit around LeBron and Anthony Davis, but then the Lakers will have to decide how much they want to or even can pay Dinwiddie for him to come back. And we are going to talk about all of that during today's video. And beginning with a short term outlook here, again, I think that Dinwiddie is off to a very good start. He so far put up 8 points per game, 5.5 assists per game, 2 steals per game believe it or not, and then is shot fairly efficiently from both the field and 3 point line too. And even looking beyond the numbers here, he's pretty much been a seamless fit for them off the bench. They've literally had to change nothing to incorporate Dinwiddie within their offense. When one of D'Angelo Russell or LeBron take their first break at the end of the first quarter, Dinwiddie is there to replace them. And with one of their primary ball handlers leaving the game, that opens up that spot for Dinwiddie, giving him the opportunity to play like a point guard rather than an off-ball shooting guard, which I do think is a good thing too. In my opinion, that gives them a lot more leeway within their rotation. They no longer have to keep one of LeBron or D'Angelo Russell on the court at all times, or even have to worry about it when one of them misses a game, which does tend to happen here and there. And I really don't think they're asking too much of Dinwiddie out there either. Even with him stepping into a primary playmaker type role off the bench, it's not like he doesn't have a guy like Anthony Davis on the court with him, who regularly plays the entire first quarter. And Dinwiddie has never gotten to play with a big like AD before in my opinion. But not only that, but then they have scoring threats like Austin Reeves and Rui Hachimura around him as well, both of which they run part of their offense through, especially lately. And when you put all that around a legitimate A tier playmaker like Dinwiddie, that can help your offense flow really well when transitioning from your starting lineup to your bench unit, and we have already seen that take place. I for one will be really shocked to see that fall apart. I imagine they will be asking Dinwiddie to do a little bit more as he better learns their offense, but I don't think it will look that much different. He's pretty much come in and filled the exact kind of role that they needed, and I really don't think you should do much to mess with that. I really don't think they should be looking to take opportunity away from him which would happen if they would revert back to a ball dominant LeBron led offense, and I don't think that would be a good thing. During their past 15 games now, LeBron has had the lowest usage rate of his entire career, sitting right around 27%, and I think LeBron finally committing to play a little bit more off the ball has benefit their entire team. And other than that happening, I don't see a way that they would be taking opportunity away from Dinwiddie, which again, I don't think they should be looking to do. I think his role is fine the way it is right now, and if he keeps filling it the way that he has been, then that could translate to him making a great argument to stick around with their team beyond this season. Now there definitely is a lot of time between now and then, and we all know how an individual player's playoff performance can affect fan perception, but I think the Lakers front office has already thought about it. In fact, I would be shocked if that was not part of their pitch to him. After all, a biomarket player is not only thinking about the rest of the current season, but also about the next one too. When you enter the bio market, aka get away from your former contract, you then lose your bird rights, and that can make it very difficult to get another big deal. I mean, look at a guy like Andre Drummond for example. After getting bought out from his near $30 million contract back in 2021, he's never gotten anywhere near that amount again. In fact, he's only been signed to minimum level contracts since. I know not everybody cares about bird rights and what they mean, but they really are important. 
They determine how much a team without salary cap space can sign you for. And if we are talking about a minimum level contract, which we are, the most they can give you is a 125% pay increase from your previous deal, which is really not that much more than a minimum level contract. And then the only other option would be using a form of the mid-level or biannual exception. And with the Lakers having used their biannual exception on Torian Prince last summer, they will not be able to use it again this summer, hence where the meaning biannual comes from. And with that in mind, Spencer Dinwiddie will be auditioning for their mid-level exception, which could either be their taxpayer mid-level worth around 5 million, or their non-taxpayer mid-level worth around 13 million, and I imagine that he's trying to audition for that second one. And again, I would not be at all surprised if Rob Plinka mentioned that to him too. They have a very open future at point guard, and a contract that they are likely looking to fill it with, making it a perfect strategy to help attract a biomarket point guard looking for a long-term home. Now, do keep in mind that Dinwiddie is by no means guaranteed to get that contract, as again, he needs to keep playing at a level that would warrant giving it to him, but I imagine that he is currently their number one option to give it to, and Dinwiddie can make that a no-brainer if he performs well come playoff time. I mean, doing that could also garner attention from other teams, but then again, he quite obviously would prefer to stay in LA. He made it very clear that coming home was a big part of why he chose their team to begin with. Who's more excited in a Laker uniform, you or your parents? Oh man, that's a that's a terrible question because it's gonna sound bad when I say my parents because they actually shed tears and I didn't. But oh man, it's a dream come true for me. <laughs> oh man, listen, hey, Mal Malibu's cool with me. You know, hey, listen, Sounds great. I'm, I'm cool with being home. All right, Spencer. Hey, thank you so much. Uh Again, I imagine that Dinwiddie would like to stay around if possible. A lot of factors obviously go into that, but given that he keeps playing well, the Lakers offer him a competitive contract, and then Dinwiddie picturing himself as a long-term fit within their future direction, then that would lead to him sticking around. Now I know a lot of talk has been made about the Lakers trading for Donovan Mitchell or Trey Young, the latter of which being a point guard, but I simply don't find it very likely. Don't get me wrong, I think they could make a pretty good offer for one of them, but unfortunately not a better offer compared to what other teams can offer. I mean, the New York Knicks have wanted Donovan Mitchell for years now, which definitely has a mutual feeling between them from what we have heard, and then they could have up to 9 first round draft picks to offer for him, completely blowing away the 3 first round picks that the Lakers have to offer. And then for Trey Young, we have heard about San Antonio wanting to pair him with Victor Wembanyama, which I do have to admit would be a pretty great pairing. And much like New York, they simply have more to offer than the Lakers do, making Trey Young another option that unfortunately might be wishful thinking. Now, maybe a different point guard will become available, or maybe they'll revisit a trade for a guy like Deshante Murray, but even with all that in mind here, Spencer Dinwiddie remains a good option for them to bring back, and especially if they lose D'Angelo Russell somewhere along the way, either through free agency, or potentially including him in a trade if he opts into that contract. But with all of that being said, what do you guys think? How do you feel about both the short-term and long-term future of Spencer Dinwiddie with the Lakers? Comment your thoughts down below. That will do it for this video though. Big thank you to those of you who took the time to watch until the end of this video, and until the end of all of my videos in general. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and hit that notification bell to never miss out when I upload a video. But as always, thank you for watching and have a great day.